Let's take a look at an example. Say you're an engineer for a large engineering consulting company. Say that the company largely works on two kinds of projects, infrastructure projects and defense projects. You want to know if there's a difference in the amount that you bid for these two kinds of projects. That is, is the distribution of bids for infrastructure projects similar to that for defense projects? You collect a sample of 12 projects of each type. Okay, so we've got 12 defense projects and 12 infrastructure projects, and these are the bids that we put in uh, for each one of those kinds of projects. Okay, and so what we want to do with the Wilcoxon rank sum test to address this hypothesis, okay, uh, D1 and D2 are the same versus D1 and D2 not the same. Okay, here we're not wanting to specify whether one is bigger than the other, we're just wanting to know um, are they just not the same? Okay, could one be bigger than the other or smaller than the other? It doesn't matter which one is which, just that they're not the same. Okay, so this is a two tail kind of test. Okay, so we have these 12 observations over here uh, for each type, and we want to rank those, pardon me, we want to uh, mix those all together and order them from smallest to largest. Okay, so we've already done that here. Okay, so we've mixed those all together. So the smallest observation was a bid for a defense project. It was 382. Okay, then the second smallest uh, bid was a 394, uh, probably million dollar bid for an infrastructure project, and so on. Okay, so we have uh, all of these different bids from smallest to largest. And what we want to do is find the rank for each one. Okay. So the rank for this project is one, okay? It's the smallest one. The rank for this project is two. Okay, here we have a two tied bids, okay? So we can't use rank three and four because they're both the same. So what we wanna do is take the average of three and four. So this is gonna have a rank of 3.5, and this is going to have a rank of 3.5. Okay, then we start back up with the next number, 5. This is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. Okay, I don't see any more ties in here anywhere. Okay, so we had 12 bids each, so our total is 24 bids, okay? So the, the largest value is gonna have a rank of N1 plus N2, which is 12 plus 12, which is 24, okay? So now we have rank order from smallest to largest, and now we go back and we uh, try to find the rank sum for each type of project. So we, um, we then go sort, I'm thinking about this in terms of Excel, I would have done this in Excel if this, uh, you know, if we weren't doing this on a light board, uh, I would rank order, you know, I would put these two columns in one, make sure I had a marker for each one, and then I would order on that column, provide this column here of the type, find what my rank is, and then sort on type again, okay? Um, so what we want to do is find the rank sum, T1 and T2, let's call T1, um, we'll call that defense, okay? And we'll call T2 infrastructure, okay? So what is the sum of ranks for the defense uh, bids? Well, we would go and sum up one and 3.5 and 3.5 and seven and eight and 10 and so on for all of the defense bids. And if we do that, we get a value of 141, okay? Likewise, for all the infrastructure-related bids, okay, we would go sum those up, 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 9, and so on. And if we do that, we get a sum of ranks of 159. Okay? So if these two um, distributions are exactly uh, the same, if they have the same measure of central tendency, uh, if one does not lie to the left or the right or the other, then you would expect these two numbers to be roughly the same, right? You would expect the ranks on one side and the other to be roughly the same. The same kind of number of 
low ranks and high ranks for each distribution. Okay. Um, so how different do these things need to be for us to reject the null? That's where the test statistic comes in. Okay, and our test statistic is, looks a little complicated, it's D1 minus N1 times N2 plus N1 times N1 plus 1 all over 2. And in the denominator, we have the square root of N1, N2, N1 plus N2 plus 1 all over 12. Okay, so let's implement this. We've got T1, 141. And so why do we only have T1 in the test statistic? Well, if you know one, you know the other because the sum of the two ranks is a known quantity, okay? So we can just use T1. Uh, here we have 12 times 12 plus 12 times 12 plus 1, all over 2, okay? And down here we have the square root of 12 times 12, okay? Sample size is the same for both of these, so this is uh, a little boring. 12 plus 12 plus 1, all over 12. Okay, note that that has nothing to do with the sample size. Okay, so if we work this out, we should get a value of negative 0 0.52. Okay, so let's plot that test statistic on the, the z-axis. Okay, so this is a z-test statistic. And so here's 0, here is negative 0.52. Okay, negative 0.52. Uh, let's say we want to use the p-value approach. Okay, this is a two-tailed test. Okay, we're not specifying is D1 less than or greater than. We're just saying is it different from. Okay, it could be less or great. So this area multiplied by 2 is the p-value. Okay, so we can go look this up in our z-table. If we do that between 0 and 0.52, we find the area uh, 0 0.1985, 0 0.1985 for this area. But we don't want that area, we want the tail area. We want this. So that's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1985. That is 0 0.3015. Okay, so this area, 0 0.3015 multiplied by 2, gives us the p-value. 0 0.3015, 3015, 3015 multiplied by 2 is 0 0.603, okay? P-value, very large number here, much larger than any uh, alpha you would ever choose, okay? Uh, we will not reject the null, okay? This value uh, would definitely lie in the non-rejection region. We're not going to reject the null hypothesis, and we're going to conclude that these two distributions have roughly the same central tendency. That is, the bids for defense and infrastructure projects are roughly the same. Our bids for one are no different than the other.